Breaking news as we come on the air tonight. Three victims and a gunman are dead after a mass shooting in the Naval Air Station Pensacola, and this is what we know right now. 12 people were shot, eight were injured, four are dead, including the shooter himself. And two of the injured were Scambia County Sheriff's deputies. They are in recovery right now. The active shooter situation was first reported at 6.51 this morning. The Navy says the Scambia County Sheriff's deputies took down the gunman less than an hour after the alert went out. Tonight, we are also learning more about the suspected shooter. Now, sources tell NBC 15 News the shooter's name was Mohammed Saeed Al-Shamrani. A U.S. official confirmed Al-Shamrani was a member of the Saudi Arabian Air Force. He was studying naval air safety at the base. Right now, NBC 15 has a team of reporters across Pensacola covering this tragedy. James Gordon has been talking to a community rocked by today's violence. Cassie Fambro has more on the law enforcement heroes who brought down the shooter. But first, we hand it over to Rachel Wilkerson. She's at NAS Pensacola right now. Uh, Rachel, walk us through what happened today. Well, a year and a half after the destruction of Hurricane Michael, FEMA is giving $15 million to pay back three cities on the Florida Panhandle. The money is reimbursing the cities for restoration after the Category 5 storm slammed into the Gulf Coast. The city of Lynn Haven is getting more than $7 million for debris removal. Bluntstown between Panama City and Tallahassee getting more than $3 million for utility repairs and service restoration. Mexico Beach, which took the brunt of the storm's damage, is getting more than $3.5 million for beach repairs. New at 6, 29,000 plants in Fairhope killed by the unusually early freeze we had this week. NBC 15's meteorologists started warning you last week about the record cold that came Tuesday night and warned you to protect those pets, pipes, and plants from the cold red weather. NBC 15's James Gordon is live now in Fairhope. James? Well, today I talked with the Director of Disease Surveillance with the Mobile County Health Department to help us all understand why such action must be taken. First, COVID-19 is a new virus, so none of us have built up an immunity to it, so it's hard for our bodies to resist it. Secondly, it's considered an R3 virus, meaning just one infected person can infect three others. It's slightly more infectious than some of the other respiratory viruses that we deal with and that it's estimated that for every one person who's infected, they would transmit, could potentially transmit that virus to three additional persons. All right, let's do the math on that real quick. Say you come in contact with someone who has the virus, the coronavirus, and you and two other people could contract the virus as well. You infect three other people and it multiplies. So just 15 contacts later, 14.3 million people have now been infected. Well, tonight on NBC 15 News at 10, we're gonna take a closer look at these numbers, the symptoms of the coronavirus, and the 20% of the population most at risk of severe illness or even death. Your comments addressing unruly behavior within the walls of Mobile County Schools continue to dominate social media. This following an NBC 15 reality check that shed light on the effect this behavior is having on teachers and students. Many of you are saying there's one way to stop it. Bring corporal punishment back into our school. NBC 15's Andrea Ramey spent the day investigating which districts allow it and asking how effective it is. Please, Do you please, take please, issue please, with please. the the LGBT you, community article or the dra drag or on which one? We delete the uh, premises. Okay. We are done. Thank you very much. New at six. Stop the presses tonight. A local printing company is refusing to print a University of South Alabama student magazine because of what's inside. NBC 15's Cassie Fambro spoke to the printer and students today. She's live tonight to explain what was so objectionable. Cassie, do you think it's effective? Overall, yeah. Sparing the rod. We do use it, uh, not near as often as, as in years past. Corporal punishment and how it's working for some local school systems. Softening the blow. Ain't nobody want a crushed up moon pie. How mobile police and parade groups are working to keep you safe this Mardi Gras. Fixing a smelly situation. And I asked him about it and he said they were going to be dumping poop there. That was his act words, poop. How the state of Alabama is addressing your concerns about dumping human waste. NBC 15 News at 6 starts now. Other colleges across the state announced their plans yesterday. Auburn will move from on-campus instruction to remote delivery beginning Monday. Troy University will be doing just the same. The University of Mobile is extending its spring break through the end of next week. 
And the University of Alabama is extending its spring break through March 30th. After that, university faculty will move to alternative and remote learning. Well, Mardi Gras season gets back underway in downtown Mobile in uh, just a couple of minutes. It sure does. NBC 15 is your Mardi Gras station, and we have team coverage tonight. Darwin Singleton will bring us the action tonight on UTV 44. Justin Moore is looking into how Mobile police are keeping you safe. But first, we send it over to Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals. Alan, what are we expecting for tonight's parade?